Well, we take a look today at the original prototype of our switched L auto tuner we built up uh, about a year ago. Turn this guy on. This is based on a uh, on a design in the 1996 QST. Uh, it's actually a review slash design of the LDG AT11 auto tuner, and uh, we always been intrigued by how these things work and thought we'd go ahead and build up a prototype to test out some of the basics and uh, ended up with with this guy. Okay we'll pop the top off and take a look at the prototype here. Uh, as you can see we built it all ugly style. We use uh, uh, most of the components are, are upside down basically so we can get to the leads. We use a large uh, uh, copper uh, copper covered piece of fiberglass board for the main uh, platform there on the left hand side towards the right rear is the Arduino Mega uh, CPU that we're using uh, towards the lower right hand side is another little piece of copper copper clad uh, workspace there that we built the SWR bridge on of course the uh, LCD display up front and the switches and some connectors and uh, uh, voltage regulator in the back side there so, uh, hardware-wise, uh, although a bit tedious, it was nothing that would require really rocket science to, to figure this out. Uh, software-wise is actually another issue, and we, because it's Arduino and we have a little bit of experience with other Arduino projects, we kind of favored that uh, microprocessor platform. And uh, there's some, fortunately, some good folks out on the web that have some open source software that they made available that helped a lot as we... Uh, as we put this thing together on the software side especially. Uh, had laid out here just a few of the hardware components just for just for comparison. Uh, of course this is a switched uh, it's a switched L uh, system and uh, the, key, the key concept is that we're using uh, uh, inductors and uh, capacitors uh, that we uh, switch in and out of the circuit, uh, monitor, test the SWR uh, and then continue on through various combinations until we find the best SWR match. And then uh, have a method to actually lock that in. Also have a method uh, to uh, store store uh, those memory locations so that we can get back to them quickly. Uh, just as a point of reference here, uh, these uh, uh, inductors on the left hand side, uh, there's a couple of different sizes there. The larger ones which are T106-2s uh, are actually preferred for this 100 watt class uh, auto tuner. The smaller ones are T82s I believe and in this particular prototype we use the smaller units and in the finished product that we'll uh, take a look at later on uh, we actually use the, the bigger ones. They can dissipate more heat and they're more efficient. Uh, 12 volt uh, relays we use uh, quite a lot of them and we went from this uh, standalone version of those, which are uh, built ugly style individuals, uh, in, the, in the finished product, we went to a, a, a prefabricated uh, relay board that has 16 on them, on it. That's uh, was relatively cheap on eBay. Again, we'll look at that later on. Uh, some silver mica capacitors that we used to to create the various capacitor and inductor combinations, and and uh, the uh, mega. Uh, the Arduino Mega Board. These are down to you can get these on eBay down to uh, around fourteen dollars, I believe, is what we paid for the last one. And uh, plenty of uh, digital and analog pins available for all your projects. We want to make sure and give credit where credit is due. This is a screenshot from uh, ON7EQ's uh, website, where he's uh, graciously provided some information and some code, some Arduino code on a on a really neat. Uh, Arduino uh, RF power and SWR meter and uh, we borrowed liberally from that code for for our system and want to make sure that that fine ham gets credit for that also we uh, are were, were uh, fortunate to have uh, access to some additional open source uh, software uh, provided by PA3HCM uh, on uh, some auto tuner code that that he developed that uh, uh, that we borrowed from as well in in uh, developing our version of uh, the code to 
to make this product work for us, our tuner. So we thank those gentlemen very much. Okay, we want to take a look now and just understand some of the basics about how this circuit, how this auto tuner is supposed to work. And uh, just let me point out just a couple of things here. We want about a 10 watt signal coming into this uh, tuner. And basically the signal is going to come in and hit this, uh, this little SWR bridge over here, which is actually a modified version of a Brune circuit which uh, basically calculates both forward and reverse uh, voltages and uh, hence from that the uh, SWR at that point can be calculated uh, by the microprocessor by the computer. Uh, so our signal comes in, hits this circuit uh, with a, an initial set of uh, inductor and capacitor combination over here and uh, the, the software then uh, does a calculation and determines if that SWR is better or worse than the previously best stored SWR and if it's better it replaces that with this information, this capacitor inductor combination. If it's worse it bypasses and moves on to the next the next choice. And uh, so part of the key to get the software to work correctly is to figure out how to come up with the the right capacitor inductor combinations, how to present those to the software or to the circuit in, uh, in how to make all those calculations fast and efficient. Okay, so after the SWR bridge, the signal moves along over here into the beginning of the inductor chain, on down the inductor chain, and on out to the output connector, coupled with uh, the capacitors and the capacitor side of the inductor chain here. And of course, all of those are either on or off depending on the uh, status of the relay associated with each inductor or capacitor. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, we'll we'll run a scan on this with no signal, but you can get an idea of uh, the amount of time it takes to scan through all the combinations of inductor capacitor that we have uh, built into our system. And again, this system is uh, uh, far from the most efficient. It's uh, quite rudimentary. It's uh, it's my attempt at just hacking something together that'll work for me. There's folks out there that have done a much 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 better job at uh, building software that's that that's efficient and, and works in their setups one of the one of the key guys out there is K3NG uh, Goody has the has been working on his uh, auto tuner for a couple of years now and he's got it just it's a it's a beautiful system both hardware and software wise uh, and so I would encourage you to check his website and see what he's got cooking uh, but for us uh, for right now where we're at this this does the job so let me go ahead and hit a scan here Look at the light show. Actually, the LEDs are are there just to assist in uh, diagnosing uh, some of the early software coding, and uh, to see which which relay is lit based on what variety of circumstances or or what changes we made in the software at that point. Not really necessary, but it does make kind of an interesting light show. That's the amount of time it takes for this code to run through every possible combination of inductor and capacitor that we have programmed that's not exhaustive. And for this prototype we're only using actually uh, five inductors and six capacitor combinations. Most other folks including the original AT11 I believe use eight, seven or eight inductors and seven or eight uh, capacitor combinations. In addition to that you can see a relay right in the center here. Again the left side relays or for the inductors and the right side are for the capacitors. That one right in the center is specifically set up for our high to low Z. You can, the way the circuit is designed, we can uh, uh, have a whole set of conditions that are affected by the uh, input impedance, whether it's high or low, and it actually depends on which side of the uh, inductor bank that the, the capacitors are uh, fed to, high or low. So uh, that, that gives more flexibility to the system. Most of those are automatically selected. Another folks version of the code in mine, it's a manual setup where I can manually select from the front panel whether it's high or low Z. Okay, so now we're set up in our homebrew CW station with our <coughs> prototype auto tuner. It's actually physically sitting on top of an old Heathkit antenna tuner that we're not using right now. We got a uh, about a 10 watt, 10 to 15 watt uh, CW signal ready to uh, try with this tuner, and we've got a 40 meter inverted V as an antenna right now. So again, we're on 30 meters. Let's key the transmitter. And you'll see on the display it shows 12, about 13 watts, and about 2.0 on the SWR. 
Also, the uh, the yellow light is uh, lit on the left-hand lower side there, which is a, a visual, uh, just a color-coded representation of the of the SWR. Green is good, less than one and a half, and yellow is mediocre. That's less than two and a half, and red is uh, higher than three on the SWR. Uh, but it can also be read directly off of the uh, off of the screen. So let's key the transmitter again, and we'll hit a scan, and we'll see if we can do any better than that 2.0 SWR. Okay, here goes the transmitter, and there goes our scan. The meter on the right is showing the actual output at the antenna. You can see that bouncing around as the as the tuner checks various combinations. And we finished, and we're at about 12 and a half watts and 1.6 on the SWR. So we're definitely better off after running that scan. Now to save that, <clears throat> I can save that in a in a predefined memory location just by holding the button here underneath the 30 meters, and that'll actually uh, save that for us for future use so we can get back there instantly by pressing that button for 30 meters.